What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are going to focus on hand sanding the handle for the Shop Talk Tuesday knife. So one of the things that I wanted to focus on in this particular episode was just the hand sanding part because we're not going to be buffing this handle. I do have the front of the scales where the actual Caso is, this area, that is buffed and polished but the rest of the handle scales are just going to have a hand sanded finish. I want it to have a little bit of texture to it and I could easily leave it where it's at right now with that particular texture and it would be perfectly fine. I don't want it to be slick because I don't want it to you know, have any risk of moving around in my hand whenever I'm chopping with it because I am going to be chopping through branches and tree limbs with this. So we just want to do enough sanding to even out everything and make sure it's nice and smooth plus we want to be able to put our finish on the spine right here to where it's nice and even all the way down and the butt and the belly of the tang so we do need to do some hand sanding to get all that stuff even and uniform plus to make sure that the finish on the handle is all even and uniform and all sanded with the same grit so we're gonna go over to the bench vise. We're gonna get this locked in place and start some sanding. So we'll do that next. Now, when it comes to hand sanding, a lot of the things that you're gonna end up doing is just making sure that everything's already even. And then you're gonna pick out what sandpapers you wanna utilize. I'm gonna be using 220 grit. 320 grit and 600 grit so that's the goal for this is just those three sandpapers I'm gonna use a few different things I've got a hard backer right here I've got a soft backer right here some little foam soft foam on this side hard foam on this side plus I got a little steel tube that's gonna help whenever we got to get into the belly area but what I'm gonna end up doing is we're gonna start off with the spine and get it nice and even so you might think okay cool well he's going to get on here and just start doing this and it's gonna be you know just back and forth motions nope we're gonna end up getting our sandpaper on here and we're gonna go across it and create an X down the spine. That's what we're gonna do at first. We're gonna do that to get rid of as many of the grinding lines from the 2x72 as possible. And we're gonna keep everything flat while we're doing it. If you just sit here and you start sanding like this, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna sand the soft material faster than the steel. So if I'm sitting here going like this, I'm going to end up creating low spots next to the steel right here where the handle meets the steel because the handle that my card is going to sand faster than this. So we got to go across it like this as we're doing it. I'm going to pull y'all in just a little bit. So we're coming across like this. And it's going to end up sanding all the way across those edges. And the reason why this is important, if you've ever done auto body or anything like that, whenever you are sanding Bondo on top of steel, you never go through and sand even where the Bondo is. So let's say, let me bring this piece of wood right here because it's got some grain in it. Now, let's say this whole entire area right here is the steel and this darker area is the bondo you don't want to sand you don't want to sand like this because what you're going to end up doing is you're just going to keep creating a little divot right here because the bondo is going to sand a lot faster than the steel so if you're going like this you're just removing bondo and you're not removing any steel if you go like this you have a better chance of getting the bondo down to where it's even with the steel but you're coming across it 
instead of just sanding on that edge and decreasing the height of the bondo the whole entire time while the steel is staying in place. So you don't want to do that, you want to go across. All the way across, like that. So you're not sanding on the edge. If we were just sanding like this, we're going to just basically be sanding on the edge of the micarta on both sides and hardly doing anything to the steel. So that was a very long way to explain that. But what we want to do is we want to come across at an angle. And we're going to do that all the way down the spine. Because we want to get it nice and even all the way. And the nice thing about going sideways with this and crossing over is it's really going to start showing where those deep gouges are from the 2x72. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about, uh, Aaron from a Lee Knives, he made a video that I told y'all to go check out about sanding your handle and being careful so that you have uh, you don't end up creating a edge that you could feel between your steel and your handle material and that is a pretty big deal it's all about comfort um, I still have grind marks in here from the 2x72 and I could have tried to chase those. Let's see if you can see these here. They are, they don't stand out a ton. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. There's a little bit going through here. And you can see those lines. Now, if I was to try and chase those with the 2x72 I would just be removing more and more and more material I'd be chasing them fighting them trying to get them out but they wouldn't be going anywhere and he makes a good point in there to where if you're just sitting there taking this and sticking it up against the belt you end up not making a square spine here sometimes you'll have it angled this way or you'll have it angled this way and then you're just sitting there chasing it and chasing it and chasing it and chasing it until you end up messing up your profile now one of the other things is with this particular spine it's almost like an S it dips down here so this is high this is high and this is high it dips down comes up dips down comes up if I was to try and use my flat platen to fix this it would just, I'd be chasing things that wouldn't be able to be fixed. So that's why we've got to go through and we got to do our hand sanding on this to even it out. So another little thing to hit on is that there's no real way to cheat the system when it comes to hand sanding. It's all about putting in the work and getting good results because you decided to do more to your knife than somebody else decided to do to theirs. But th there's no real way to, to cheat at this. You can try and use your 2x72, you can try and use your 1x30, you can try and hide it with doing different etches and stuff like that, but this is where the time consuming next level stuff comes into play. The more work you put into this particular part of your knife making, the better quality product you're going to have with your overall outcome and trying to skip these steps or trying to hide these in a scotch bright finish or something like that is not what you want to do you put in the time you put in the work you put out a quality product because you took the time 
and you went through and you did the stuff that nobody wants to do, which is hand sanding. It's like the, <laughs> the worst part of knife making, unless you are crazy and you like doing stuff like this. You know, if you are, ain't nothing wrong with that, but I'm not that person. I wish that I could skip this part, but I can't because I want my knives to look awesome. So I go through and I do this crappy part of it, which is the hand sanding part. But it's all about taking your time and perfecting these steps, you know, just to make sure that you, you put out something that is worth having your name on it. Okay, I'm going to sand on this for a while and then uh, probably go to the next grit and I'll talk some more whenever we get to that point because getting the spine all finished, this is going to take a little while. <laughs> and I don't want this episode to be 50 minutes long. So we'll get back whenever we move on to the next step of sanding after we get everything nice and even and then we can start focusing on the sides. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm not just sitting here and sanding like this because I do want to blend in any of the harsh lines. I'm sanding past those lines so we don't intensify the hard lines. We just remove the tops of them. So if we had this point right, right here, we wouldn't sit here and just sand that or sand on either side of it. We'll cross over and slowly work it to where we're nice and rounded and we're evening that roundedness all the way down. So that's why I'm still cross hatching it and going different angles. And I'll tell you, this is where all the prep work and getting everything even going into this really come into play because I'm not trying to remove a bunch of material. I'm not going to end up accidentally sanding this one more than this one or anything like that because I'm not trying to take off material. I'm just trying to blend things in. So it's just going to smooth things out and give us a nice finish. And with me feeling this, I'm probably not going to go up to the 600 grit. Because where I sanded the spine just to the 220 grit, it's actually really smooth. So I think that I'm just going to go up to the 320 grit that we have here. And I'm going to leave that finish on the spine, the belly, and the handle. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to get this stuff sanded. I'm going to talk to you all whenever I get it flipped over. Because there's a few things that you focus on in the belly that you need to. But for right now... I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this, and then I'll come back whenever we get this part done. So when we get to the belly part of this, we're going to be using the soft yellow side of this. You know, we use the black medium side for the flats of this. Now we're going to use a soft one so that it can kind of decompress and get into the the more contoured areas right here. So, so far what we did was we used a hard backer for everywhere where we were gonna hit the steel, and then medium for the flats, and the soft for the areas that have the, the contours so it can flex in there, and get inside all those little nooks. And we're just gonna keep sanding until we get an even finish all the way through the scales. You want to get a nice even finish all the way around before you go up to your next grit so you can get rid of any sanding lines that you have here. And once you're comfortable with that, you go up to your next grit and you start sanding out the previous grit sanding lines. But right now, we're just going to keep softening any hard lines that we have. And we're going to make sure that we get a nice even finish throughout the handle. So 
So now that we're on the 320 grit, I am going to end up switching to the firm side of this little foam pad and we're going to be sanding even all the way around. I'll, I'll still do a little bit of circular motions and all that, but we're going to primarily focus on just sanding straight back and forth to just even out the finish. And you want to make sure that you're going all the way to the edge of everything. I tend to put mine in a vise just like this so that I can run the pad straight into this and it acts as a stop so that I'm not coming off the edge. So that I can just sit here and run into this as many times as I want and it's going to keep this flat going into it and not risking coming up here and hurting the finish that I have on the front of the scales where they meet the Ricasso and it also doesn't let me accidentally skip up onto the blade and end up sanding my finish off. So we're just going to go through and sand back and forth on all of this just to be able to even out the finish and put the same grit finish on all of the scales. So we're going to do that, come all the way around, sand all of this. I've already sanded the butt of it but on that one. Again, just going through, do even pulls all the way across to start getting that same finish. And then once we get into the spine area, we're just going to pull past. This 320 grit, I'm not pressing this down into this, so I'm not going to risk really sanding the scales faster than the metal because I'm just letting the sandpaper do its job. Light pressure all the way across just to even out the sanding lines and that's it. I'm not trying to remove material. All I'm trying to do is put the same finish on everything. And you'll see that I'm coming in and I'm pulling past. Pulling past, pulling past, pulling past because if you get onto the metal area and you just start sanding right here, especially if you're not going to buff it, if you start sanding right here, you get little swirl lines where the, the sandpaper ends and comes back, ends, comes back. So we're going all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, and getting that nice even finish all the way down the spine. Remember, this is a lot easier to to handle whenever you are buffing all this because that buffing compound will even out some of the minor scratches but we're not doing a buff finish on this so we got to make sure that everything that we do ends uh, leaves us with a real good finish. So we're going to end up using some Meguiar's Ultra Cut Compound to buff this. this is something I'm going to do that's a little bit different than what I typically do. I've seen a few people do a, a wheel polish and things like that. I've wanted to do this for a little while to see if it ends up working. It's just going to put a little finish on it without being too too crazy with using like the buffing wheel and a heavy compound. I want it to be nice and protected, but I also don't want it to fill in all of the, the little grooves and lines on the material. So I'm going to go through, get this nice and buffed. There we go. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here. So here is where we're at. We've got a nice, even finish on our handle. Our black micarta pins stand out nicely. Brass lanyard tube. 
Belly looks really nice and even. Same with the butt of it, plus the whole entire spine. Got a nice even finish. Now I'm gonna leave this finish on here. I'm not going to acid etch the spine or anything like that. I'm gonna leave it how it is. We're gonna leave the bevels all nice and acid etched. You can tell I still need to clean up the adhesive and all that stuff on the, the blade there. But we're gonna go ahead and just leave it how it is. I, I think that this particular finish on the handle is perfect because it still has a little bit of grit to it. You know, even though it's really smooth, it, you can still feel it. It's not, you know, that smooth as glass finish. It still has a little bit of texture to it. And that's what I really wanted for this particular handle. So I had a good grip on it when it comes to chopping and everything. So, yeah, I like the way this is. Y'all let me know if y'all think that that was the right direction to go on this. Or if y'all would have sanded it higher and uh, buffed it out. You know, I'm interested to know what y'all y'all think about this overall finish. So let me know in the comment section. Now, the next step for this is going to be putting an edge on it and chopping some stuff. So in the next week's Shop Talk Tuesday, we're going to sharpen it. Then we're going to go ahead and cut some branches with it, cut some wood, cut some water bottles, cut all kinds of things. It's going to be a fun episode. So that's what y'all have to look forward to next week. But for right now, that's where we're at. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or one of my other videos if you haven't yet. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. Catch y'all next time.